Now, the list that you have your values in, ha we have to place that into this where it's flashing. Notice above each number it has L1, L2, L3, L4. In mine it's in yellow, so that means I have to push my second button, which is yellow, and the number 1 because I placed my, my values in list 1. I'm going to close that up, push enter, and notice it should say done. If I go back to stat, and remember my values are in edit, now the calculator has actually placed all my values in order. This is very helpful because I need to place the number of days that the rainfall was between 0 inches and 0.19 inches. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down. Now notice right now I'm at 1 and this corresponds to the value where it says L11. I'm going to go down through here. It's already counting for me in the first part. And I need to find all the values that are from 0 to 0.19. Notice there's 0.19. I go to the last one. So if I look right here at this value, I see that 23 days in the month, it was from 0 to 0.19 inches of rain. So I'm going to put in the number 23 for my frequency. Okay, the next frequency says find all the days. Let me call my calculator back up. I've lost my problem. <coughs> Let's see. Here it is. Um, okay, I'm going to find all the days that range from uh, 0.20 to 0.39. Just think of like 20 to 39. Now, um, I'm going to start going down through here till I find the numbers. Oops, okay, so this is the last one. Now keep in mind, this is 26. Uh, if I think about it, I can think of how many numbers I add to 23 to get 26. So it would be three of them. So I can put in three. Okay, the next thing asks me to uh, look at the numbers that are from 40 to 59. So I'm going to start counting. There's one, two, three, four, okay. 3. And if you take this and add, you can see 23 plus 3 plus 3 more. That should total 29. And what I'm doing in a way is I'm getting you prepared to do the cumulative frequency because that, that's the process that's taken for this. Uh, notice there's no values from 60 to 79. So I have to put in a 0. That's very important. That means there's no days in that category. Notice from 80 uh, 0.80 to 0.99. There's no value, so I have to put 0. The next one we have is 1.33, and so there's no more in this category. So finally, we get to the last category. We have one day where there was an inch, 1.33 inches of rain. That's all. So that's why we had to continue our frequency distribution to account for that value. And I'm going to check my answer and notice we have uh, this. Now notice it asks us to continue. So I click continue and ask you a question. Does the distribution appear to be roughly normally distributed? Now what this means is that is a bell shaped curve. Um, when you look at this graph, that means it's equal on both sides. Well, in our particular graph, we can see that we start up high. We would have a 3, 3, come down to 0, 0, and then 1. So notice it would be skewed to the right because when you think about the numbers, you start high, high, low, low, and then go up a little bit. So in this, does it appear to be normally distributed? No, it doesn't. Now, we have to read the choices because they give us three choices for no. What we're trying to do is interpret what our values look like. If you actually plot these points, you could see this. But notice, I'm going to go through the different choices. No, although the frequencies start low, well, the frequencies do not start low. They start higher than the other one. So we know that A is not correct. Notice the next one, although the distribution is approximately symmetric, the frequencies do not start low increase to some maximum then decrease. That's one choice. And then the next one, the distribution is not symmetric and the frequencies do not start off low. Okay, so we're going to pick D and check our answer and we have it correct.
Notice there's no more things at, at the bottom that say continue, so that means we are finished with this problem. So this is an example of constructing a frequency distribution. Now, a relative frequency distribution, the way you do that, I'm going to call up my calculator. I'm going to do second and mode. That does quit. I'm going to hit clear. Um, to do a relative frequency distribution, you have to uh, convert each of your frequencies to a percent. The way you do that, you will have to uh, add up all of your frequencies. So in this particular one, we have, what, seven different values. So if I want to do a, a relative frequency, I will take my value, the 3, and divide by the total. It's the amount divided by the total. So 3 divided by 7. Now, a relative frequency is written in percents, so we're going to do times 100 to move our decimal two places to the right. So if I want to construct a relative frequency, we can see that about 42.9% of, uh, of the rainfall was in these, this category. Oh, I forgot something, and this happens often. I need to scroll back up. Notice I don't have all the values. And if I looked at this at the beginning, I could tell that. So it's not 3 divided by 7. Let's go back. How many total values do we have? Well, we have 23 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1. I'll say 23 plus 7. Notice we have a total of 30 values. So that was not accurate. We need to look to see what percent was between 0 and 19 or 0.19. So we will take 23 and divide by 30. That is our starting point. So be very careful in course compass because often they will have a bar to the right where it scrolls up and down and you may miss a value. So be sure to, to look at this in your problem. So times 100, we can see that 76.7% of the time that they had from no rain at all to only, uh, what, a hundred, uh, 19 hundredths of an inch, very, very small amount in that month. Notice we can do the next one, which we have 3 divided by 30, and that means we, and if we multiply by 100, 10% of the time they had rain from uh, 0 0.20 to 0 0.39, okay, or 39 uh, hundredths of an inch, okay. Um, Notice the next one would be 10%. This would be 0%, 0%, 0%, and 1 divided by 30 would actually be about 33%. I mean, sorry, 3.3%. I'm going to multiply by 100. So you can see this. Notice it'd be 3.33%. So if you're doing a, constructing a relative frequency, you have to convert everything to percents, and you have to find the total first. Now cumulative, uh, what happens with cumulative? You write the first value down, the 23. You add the next one to that, so the next value would be 26. You add the next one, would be 29. The next one would be 29, 29, 29, and finally 30. So cumulative, you're actually adding your values as you go along. So this is just a short video to uh, help you understand uh, frequency distributions.